Hello there, I'm Andrew Foote and I'm the Chair of Vocal Studies at the University of Western Australia Conservatorium of Music. And I'd like to offer you my top five tips for singers presenting for Western Art voice exams in ATAR. Um, and I'm making it very clear, Western Art, not contemporary and not music theatre. Tip number one is know your numbers. What do I mean by that? ATAR examinations are a snapshot in time. They're not assessing who you are as a person or the work that you've done. They are merely assessing what you're presenting on the day. Unlike an audition where the panel is largely looking at what your potential is, where they can see you might be going and how they may assist you on that journey, ATAR purely looks at what did you present on the day. Therefore, you need to know what the marking key is or the grid or the rubric that is being used. If you haven't seen this already, you should absolutely ask for this as quickly as possible so you can see what the various categories are and what the various adjectives are that are used. What I would then do is look at each of your songs and self-assess. How am I going against this category? Where would I mark myself? What about this category? Where would I mark myself? Once you've done that for all the songs, you can get a rough indication of what you think your mark might be. Uh, you can then go and talk with your teacher and you can discuss it together and they can say, yes, I agree with this, I disagree on this, and you get a clearer picture of where you are. If you know your numbers, you know what you're going to be assessed on and you know how you might be perceived. You're then in a position to either reject some songs or put some extra ones in or to work on specific elements within those songs. My second tip is on repertoire choice, and this is crucial to your success in the ATAR exam. Your repertoire should show off that you can do various things technically and also cover various styles. So you might be doing uh, two, three, four languages. You might be doing fast, slow, high, low, loud, soft, uh, graduations. There might be recitative. Whatever it happens to be, make sure that you're covering all the bases according to the, uh, the marking grid. The other thing is make sure of the timing. So uh, this is where people often come unstuck. They, you've studied a whole heap of songs across the last couple of years and you think, oh, I've got to cram them all in. No, 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 don't cram them in. Choose your best songs and present them and present them really well. You're far better off doing less songs that meet the minimum requirements than doing an extra song that we then just go, oh, really, why did you do that? So do the minimum you need to do to show yourself off. In terms of repertoire choice, I would avoid, in general, music theatre. I have been on panels where uh, music theatre has been presented and the examiners go, no, the, it's Western art. Music theatre has its place and it's got its own examination system. It's not to be presented in this. Study it by all means and your teacher will have given you this repertoire just as they may have given you big operatic arias for the same reason, to develop you as an individual, to develop your style, your singing technique. But usually, uh, music theatre and operatic is really designed for different voices. Unless you've got a really well-developed voice, you know, something like a 25, 30-year-old's voice, opera then could be suitable, or unless it's a very simple aria. Um, otherwise, avoid those more difficult songs, present simpler songs exceptionally well. My third tip is know your song. What do I mean by that? Well, there are various components to a song, of course. Um, one of the key things is get the right notes. I know that's so so uh, dumbed down, but it's actually really interesting how many people don't get the right notes, the right pitches, the right rhythms. Secondly, get the right words and pronounce them correctly. If you need help, ask someone for it. Go and check up from native speakers on how they sing different languages. Um, this is really crucial because it will be picked up in the examination. The other thing, that, and I think this is the big one, is know the meaning of what you're singing. It's probably unrealistic for most of us who don't speak a language naturally to be able to understand every word, word by word, as we're singing. But you should know what this song is about in general. You should know what this phrase is about in particular, and you should know what that word is, that word is, and that word is. What you can do with that is sit down, and this is my favorite prop, a cup, sit down in a comfy chair with a cup of tea, with your score in front of you and with your translation, and read through it slowly and understand what that means. 
This is your thinking time. You don't have to sing, but it's still valuable practice. So understand what the word is actually saying and then convey that in your face and present that to us and also through the beauty of your voice or the horror of your voice or the sadness or the joy in your voice. My fourth tip is about your pianist. Choose your pianist wisely. This should be someone who you get on with very well, someone you can spend time with, and someone who you rehearse with so they get to know your voice and how you want to present your song. I'm quite amazed at how often students present for examinations and they just clearly haven't worked with the pianist. The vast majority of repertoire that you're presenting is actually a duet. It's not a solo song. Therefore, you need to know the piano part and they need to know your part. In my view, it's far better to work with a pianist who is not an absolute top shelf technician, but someone who listens to you, supports you, provides a little bit of an extra push if you need it. They know your voice well. They'll go a bit faster or slower according to what you're doing the day. I have seen examinations where really technically incredibly proficient people have come in, uh, played the piano, and it's been a piano recital. Don't do that, it's a voice exam. My final tip is perform. By perform, I mean be there, own the room, present to the panel. Don't necessarily look at them because their job is to sit down to listen to write, so just ignore what they're doing, but sing to the back of the room as if I'm doing that out there into the space. In between songs, take your time, go and take a sip of water if you need to, come back, loosen up a little bit. It's fine, it's an exam, it's not a performance per se. So take your time, present each song, think about what you're doing, you're ready to perform, and off you go. A key thing here is um, we don't want to see uh, masses of movement with your hands or your bodies, okay? So it's Western art is predominantly about standing still and using a very, very slight gesture on occasion. What we really want to see is what are you doing vocally and what are you doing with your face? This is what conveys the words, the meaning, the feeling of a song. This is the key thing. And again, you can practice that sitting in a chair, thinking about what the song is about and how you want to present it. My bonus tip is have fun. Yeah, yeah, I know it's stressful. It can be a bit frightening on the day and there'll be nerves in there. But at the end of the day, you've worked for a year, two years more on this repertoire. You know this stuff, you've got it. So come in and show the panel that you love this music and you're going to perform it for them and you're going to have fun. I don't mean the whole time you have to be there with a cheesy look like that. That's obviously silly in a sad song. But there's no problem with actually smiling in a song or being a little bit more um, sorrowful in your face. Just really have fun. Show us how much you enjoy this music. I really hope um, these have been helpful to you and I hope you go exceptionally well in your ATAR exam. Certainly I'd love to hear you at some point and come along and sing for us at the, the University of Western Australia Conservatorium of Music and Sarah McLeaver and I would love to have a listen to you. Go well.